Let's have a look at this question based on calorimetry. And the question is a sort of medium level question. This is based on straight away a simple formula. So the question says the quantities of heat required to raise the temperature of two solid copper spheres of radii R1 and R2 through 1 Kelvin are in the ratio. So there is some relation between R1 and R2. This is given in the question. And we have to tell what is the ratio of heat required to raise the temperature of these two copper spheres. These spheres are made of same material. So what is the ratio of heat required? Q1 divided by Q2. If we raise the temperature of these two spheres by 1 Kelvin. So we are raising the temperature by 1 Kelvin in both these spheres. And the ratio of these radius R1 is to R2. This we know, R1 by R2, we can see this is nothing but 1.5, given in the question, and we can write it as 3 by 2. So we know this thing, and we know the material is same, what is the ratio of heat required? Now straight away you will say, the formula for heat required Q is equals to ms delta T. Yes, this is the formula, and we have to apply this and get the answer. So straight away let's put the values, M1 S delta T divided by M2S delta T. Now, S is same because the material is same. Specific heat is same. Delta T is also same. Delta T is 1 Kelvin in both the cases. So, delta T is same. It cancels out. M1 by M2. Now, you know what? When we multiply a mass per unit volume by the volume, we will get the mass. Okay? So, mass per unit volume is same in both the cases. So, rho also gets cancelled out. Now this means the ratio of heat required is the ratio of masses and this is equal to ratio of volumes. And you know what? Volume is proportional to R cube. Volume of a solid sphere is proportional to R cube. Okay? So we know R1 cube by R2 cube, this will give us the ratio of heat required. Now do we know R1 by R2? Do we know R1 by R2? Yes. This is 3 by 2. So Q1 by Q2 is nothing but 3 by 2 whole cube. So we get 27 divided by 8. And we can see that option C is the right answer for our question. Here is a simple question on Brewster angle. Wow. The question says that uh, the Brewster angle IB for an interface should be. And the light is going from rarer to denser medium. So here are the possible ranges and in option B we have a particular value. So these are the options. Now let's talk about what is this Brewster angle. What do we mean by Brewster angle? Well, when we have a particularly polarized light and it is incident on a surface, some things can happen. There can be refraction and there can be reflection also. Now at a very special angle, Let's say the special angle is IB. At this special angle, we find there is no reflection. This special angle is now called Brewster angle. Right? So this is the definition of Brewster angle. The angle at which we have no reflection from the optical surface when a particularly polarized light is incident on that surface. Now, you can see that I have drawn an interesting angle 90 degree over here. This phenomena happens when we have the refracted light and the supposed to be reflected light between these two light rays, there is an angle of 90 degree. This is the case for Brewster angle. And from the diagram, we can see that IB plus R is equals to 90 degree. Can you see that? Yes. And we can also see from Snell's law, if we take the refractive indexes to be N1 and N2, from Snell's law, we have uh, N1 sine of IB is equals to N2 sine of R. Okay. From these two equations, uh, we can place the value of R as 90 degree minus IB. And we can see we are getting 10 of IB is equal to N2 by N1. Now, in our question, light was going from uh, rarer to denser medium. 
Therefore, N2 is greater than N1. So we have 10 of IB to be greater than 1. And for this, we have the range of IB from 45 degree to 90 degree. Okay, okay. So let's go and mark option, option A as the right answer for this question. Let's have a look at this question, which is based on thermodynamics. The question says that uh, two cylinders A and B of equal capacity are connected to each other via a stopcock. So between these two cylinders, there is a stopcock. A contains an idle gas at standard temperature and pressure. So in chamber A, there is gas. In chamber B, uh, there is no gas. It is completely evacuated. Wow, so there is vacuum and the entire system is thermally insulated. So we thermally insulate the system that is delta Q is equals to zero. There is no heat exchange whatsoever. Okay, the stopcock is suddenly opened. The process is. So when we suddenly open the stopcock, what do you think will happen? Well, the gas will expand. There will be change in volume. There will be change in pressure. And we have to pick uh, what is the correct representation of this process. And these are the four options. Actually, the process is very similar to free expansion, but we unfortunately don't have free expansion in our options. So we have to go with one of these options. So what should we do? We can see that delta Q is equals to zero. There is no heat exchange and the process is very quick. So it is most appropriate to mark option D adiabatic as the right answer for our question. Here we have a simple question based on magnetism. And this question is very easy. So the question says, an iron rod of susceptibility 599 is subjected to a magnetizing field 1200. The permeability of the material of the rod is. So susceptibility is given, we have to tell the permeability. Well, question is very, very simple. These are the given information and we know the formula. How to calculate the permeability? Well, we have mu is equals to mu naught times in bracket, we have 1 plus xm, where xm is susceptibility. So let's put the values and get the answer. xm is given to be 599. So 1 plus 599 is 600. 600 times mu. Mu is uh, 4 pi into 10 raised to power minus 7. So this will give us mu, okay? And we can see that the 600 times 4, this is 2, 4, 0, 0. And we have pi over here into 10 raised to power minus 7. Now we can write this in different style. We can write it as 2.4 pi into 10 raised to power minus 4, right? So this is the answer and we can mark option option C as the right answer for our question. Here is a nice question on capacitors. Now let's look at the question very carefully. The capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor with air as the medium is 6 microfarad. So there is a very cute little uh, capacitor, parallel plate capacitor. Its capacitance is given to be 6 microfarad. Wow. With the introduction of a dielectric medium, the capacitance becomes 30 microfarad. Now we bring a dielectric slab which perfectly fits this parallel plate capacitor. The new capacitance is given to be 30, 30 microfarad. Awesome. Now, the permittivity of the medium is asked. What is the permittivity of the medium? What is the new permittivity? Well, let's try to recall the formula for finding the capacitance. Do you know how to find the capacitance of a parallel plate capacitor when the medium is air? Well, we have this formula as epsilon naught A by D, where A is the area of the plate and D is the distance between the two plates. Okay? Yes. Now, when we insert the dielectric, the formula will change. We will have 
new permittivity, we will call it epsilon. And epsilon A by D. This is the new capacitance. Now we have to find what is this new permittivity. What is epsilon? We will get this when we divide these two equations. So epsilon divided by epsilon naught. This is equal to C2 divided by C1. And we will get this as 30 divided by 6, which is 5. So epsilon comes out to be 5 times epsilon naught. What was epsilon naught? It was 8.85 into 10 raised to power minus 12. Let me put this value. 8.85 into 10 raised to power minus 12. What are we getting? Epsilon is equal to 0 0.44 into 10 raised to power minus 10. Isn't it true? Yes? Okay. So we can go and mark option A as the right answer for our question. Here we have a question based on current electricity. And the question is so easy. So question says, a charged particle having drift velocity of 7.5 into 10 raised to power minus 4 meter per second in an electric field of 3 into 10 raised to power minus 10 volt per meter has the mobility of. So what is given? Drift velocity is given and electric field is given. What is asked? Mobility is asked. Oh, oh. So do you know that drift velocity is directly proportional to electric field? Do you know this? If we increase the electric field, drift velocity will increase. If we decrease the electric field, drift velocity will decrease. And when there is no electric field, there is no net drift. Yes. Now, let me tell you, uh, the proportionality constant, let's call it mu, is known as mobility. So mobility is nothing but this proportionality constant. It is uh, Vd divided by E. Drift velocity per unit electric field. Now, drift velocity is given as 7.5 into 10 raised to power minus 4. And electric field is given by 3 into 10 raised to power minus 10. So let's quickly calculate what are we getting. So we are getting 2.5 into 10 raised to power 6. This is mobility. Now we can mark option D as the right answer for our question. Here is a nice question on finding the resistance. This is a very cute question. The color code of a resistance is given below. We can see this beautiful resistance with these beautiful little colors. The value of resistance and tolerance respectively are. So we have to tell what is the resistance and what is the tolerance. Now I will say these first three band will give us the resistance and the last band will give us the tolerance. Okay. Now, let's see how do we find the resistance. Here is a color code table. Now, the first band will give us the first term of resistance. The second band will give us the second term of the resistance. And the third band will give us not the third term of resistance. This gives us the multiplier. Multiplier. And then the last thing is tolerance. So, we have this thing. Now, First band. First band is yellow in color and we can see yellow color represents 4. Okay. So let us write 4 over here. Now second band. Second band is second band is violet in color. It represents 7. So let's write 7 over here. Then the multiplier. What is the multiplier? The band is brown in color. Brown represents multiplier of 10. So let's multiply this thing by 10. Okay, now tolerance. Oh, oh, so tolerance is golden in color. So we have plus minus 5. So we will write plus minus 5%. Okay, so our resistance is 470 and the tolerance is 5%. Okay, so we can go now and mark option B as the right answer for this question. Here we finally arrive at a question which is more than easy. It is very, very easy question. The question says, 
the solids which have negative temperature coefficient of resistance are negative temperature coefficient of resistance what does this mean well these substances their resistance decreases when we increase their temperature if you want to decrease their resistance just heat them up their resistance will decrease and they will conduct more now which are these substances does metal fall into this category no metal does not fall as the temperature of a metal increases its resistance also increases so this cannot happen for metal can it happen for insulators yes for some insulator it can happen can it happen for semiconductors yes it happens for semiconductors also so we can mark option b as the right answer for our question let's have a look at this awesome question on gravitational force question says a body weighs 72 newton on the surface of the earth so let's imagine our friend on earth he is a small child and his weight is 72 newton now weight is usually the normal reaction on the person and in this case normal reaction is equal to gravitational force and this is given to be 72 newton all right okay what is the gravitational force on it what is the gravitational force on it at a height equal to half the radius of the earth now he is at some different location his height from the surface of the earth is equal to half the radius of the earth it is capital r by 2 now when the object is at this location when the boy is at this location what is the gravitational force on the boy this is the question we have to find the gravitational force did we get the question yes now what was the formula we used to find the gravitational force in terms of mass of the object and the mass of the planet what was the formula you would say well that is very easy if the object is outside the planet we can apply this formula we have force as g capital m small m divided by distance between the object and the center of the earth whole square distance between the object and the center of the earth what is this distance you would say it is capital r plus r by 2 r is the radius of the earth so in order to move from the center to the surface of the earth we have to move by capital r and then again we have to move by some height to reach the object we again move by r by 2 to reach the object so the total distance between the center and the object is capital r plus r by 2 isn't it okay so in the denominator we have capital r plus r by 2 whole square yes whole square should be there okay so this is our gravitational force between the two objects you would say well we don't know what is the mass of the earth we don't know what is the mass of the child and we also don't know what is the radius of the earth so how do we get this uh, value of f dash well let me give you a hint you can see the previous case in the previous case the object is at a distance of capital r from the center of the earth and he is on the surface of the earth so the gravitational force on the boy earlier would be g capital m small m divided by divided by r square yes this time we have r square now we have the two equation we can divide them and get the answer so let's see what are we getting f dash divided by f this is coming out to be r square divided by r plus r by 2 whole square yes okay and this thing we can see is coming out to be 4 divided by 9 all right okay now f dash f dash comes out to be 4 by 9 times of f what was f what was f can you see f was 72 oh ho so let's just place 72 over here and we can see 9 8s are 72 and 8 4s are 32 so 32 newton is the new force on the object on the surface of the earth it was 72 newton and outside the surface of the earth at a distance of r by 2 from the uh, surface of the earth it is 32 newton it has decreased and we can go and mark option d as the right answer for this question let's have a look at another easy question 
This question is based on energy mass equivalence. That is, this question is based on our famous formula E is equals to mc square. The question says the energy equivalent of 0.5 gram of a substance is. So we know the mass, we have to tell the energy equivalent. Very simple. Let's put the mass into this equation, which is 0.5 gram. Now let's convert that into kg. So 0.5 into 10 raised to power minus 3 kg. This is our mass. And we will multiply it by c square. c is the speed of light and we can write its value as 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second. So we whole square this thing. Now what are we getting? We are, we are getting 9 times 0.5. This is about 4.5 and then we have uh, 10 raised to power minus 3 multiplied by 10 raised to power 16. This is giving us the answer. The answer is coming out to be 4.5 uh, into 10 raised to power uh, 13. Yes. So we can see that option D is the right answer for this simple question. Here we have a beautiful question on beats. The question says, in a guitar, two strings A and B are made of same material and are slightly out of tune and they produce beats of frequency 6 Hz. Now beat frequency is given to be 6 Hz and beat frequency is nothing but Fa minus Fb mod. This is given to be 6. When the tension in B is slightly decreased, when the tension in string B is slightly decreased, then the beat frequency increases to 7 Hz. Wow. So what is happening? We decrease tension in string B. Then this will cause some change in frequency of string B. And as the frequency of string B changes, then this beat frequency also changes. Now, if the frequency of A is 530 Hz, the original frequency of B will be. So they have given us what is Fa. Fa is said to be 530 hertz. This is given. And with the help of this, we have to tell what is the frequency in string B. This is the question. Now, what formula shall we apply? We have the formula. Fa minus Fb mod is equal to 6. Now, you can see that this formula can result in two possible cases. If Fb, if frequency in string B, happens to be less than the frequency in string A. If it happens to be less than 530 hertz, then this formula will give us the answer Fa minus Fb is equal to 6. If Fb happens to be greater than Fa, then this formula will give us the answer Fb minus Fa is equal to 6. So which case is the correct one? We have to decide that. Which case is the correct one? How to decide that? Well. There is a way. They have given us some crucial information. They have said when the tension in string B is slightly decreased, then the beat frequency increases. So let's see what happens when we decrease the tension in a string. Does the frequency of that string increases or it decreases? What do you think? Well, I will give you a clue that velocity is equal to frequency times lambda, right? We remember this formula. This means frequency is equal to uh, V divided by lambda. And we can write V as uh, under root T by mu, right? This is the velocity of wave in a string. And then we have 1 by lambda over here. So this will give us the frequency. Now, as we decrease the tension, what do you think will happen? Will the frequency increase or decrease? As tension decreases, as tension decreases, then the frequency also decreases. So what is happening to string B? Its frequency is decreasing. And if Fb decreases, if Fb decreases, then it is said that the beat frequency is increasing. This can only and only happen in case 1. Because in case 1, if we decrease the frequency of string B, then we can see this difference Fa minus Fb, this difference will actually increase. So, beat frequency will increase. And this cannot happen in case 2. If we decrease Fb in this case, then Fb minus Fa, this difference will actually decrease. 
So beat frequency should decrease. But in our question, it is said that the beat frequency is increasing. So we can only and only take case one. Okay? Yes. Now, what shall be our answer when we take the first case? We can see when we put FA is equal to 530, FB is coming out to be 530 minus 6, that is 524. So option D is the right answer for this question.